I'm your host, Tommy Ashley, listening to the Inside Carolina podcast, sponsored by JohnnyTShirt.com and Johnny T-Shirt on Franklin Street. They're sponsors of this Inside Carolina podcast. You need to support them. They're local businesses on Franklin Street. They hook everybody up with all the sweet Carolina gear, Nike gear, Jordan gear, whatever you need, Johnny T-Shirt and JohnnyTShirt.com. Last week, if you watched on YouTube, you, you saw what we had in the room on YouTube. We had the 2010 reunion show we had the offense we had a bunch of offensive linemen we had some other dudes today we've got the defense the dogs of 2010 i'm gonna kick it to joey powell my co-host joey's gonna get us started right folks this is gonna be a fun one if you're listening on itunes right now you need to go flip on youtube so you can see all these dudes hanging out with us joey what's happening Hey, man. Appreciate you having me. Glad to have these three fine gentlemen with us. Uh, also, if you're checking us out on YouTube right now, um, or if you're checking us out on the audio portion, be sure to stop, rate, and review us, uh, and then flip over to YouTube so you can see what's going on and see the, the visual part of this medium. But really want to thank the, the three guys that are with us right now. They were key components of the 2010 defense, which, uh, again, hearing most fans say it, and depending on who you've, who you've read, I said that was probably the most talented defense that North Carolina has ever had. And, man, it's a, sh it's a shame that that freaking world got in the way and worked against these guys. But we're glad to have them with us. I'm going to go around first and let them each introduce themselves and say what they're up to now, where they're living, what's going on, and, and kind of catch you guys up. So we'll start, we'll start first with, um, with our, our return guest, uh, Mr. Searcy Collin, straight from Houston. What's up, big guy? Yeah, this is Norris Cersei. Uh, right now, I've just been residing in Houston, full-time dad, man. When I'm not with the kids, I'm playing golf and doing dad duties and honey duties. That's all I've been doing <laughs> these past couple of years, and I love it. All right. Uh, what about uh, – let's go to A.C. Slater. I mean, Matt Merletti. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you guys having me on. So I'm in Apex, North Carolina, still in the area, and um, have a 13-month-old, almost 14-month-old now, son, and uh, married in the area, doing employee benefits consulting in the area, and um, hoping there's a season. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And last but not least, West Stanley's finest. Quan, how you doing, man? Hey, this is Quan Sturvett, man. Uh, I was, I've been coaching high school football the last, I guess, last five years, five, six years. And I just the, today it came out. The season's going to start back in, I guess, February when the season's going to start back. But I'm still out here in North Carolina, out here in Charlotte, near my hometown, Oak Grove, out here. Just trying to live right now at this point. And uh, the guys have all commented on their various degrees of quarantine hair or facial hair and as somebody like Merletti, as somebody who can't grow facial hair, I will just, I will just nod and nod in awe and and say that I appreciate their <laughs> their facial locks glowing the way they do. So first thing, Merletti things first. look eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Merletti, the <laughs> only person, he's the only person that used his senior annual high school picture <laughs> all through college. Right, <laughs> Merletti look eighteen. <laughs> look, so. Joy, before you move on. I said we were going to clown Bruce Carter. Bruce Carter was supposed to be here. Denaris, what do you think about Bruce not showing up? Hey, man, Bruce down to the sticks. You can't, I'm surprised he was able to find, find service to text everybody back. You know what I'm saying? Man, so, sir, I'm going to talk bad to him when I talk to him on the phone. Me too. Me too. That, that's it. So, <laughs> He's supposed to be here. <laughs> so the backstory there for, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we thought that we were going to have Bruce, but Bruce texted us just before we started recording today, and apparently he's laid up in the weeds somewhere. So uh, we're waiting to see, uh, waiting to see where he turns up, but uh, we definitely miss him. So we're going to start at the beginning of that 2010 season, and kind of the same way we did with the offense last week. Uh, and I'll kick it to you, sirs, first. Um, when did things first start feeling like they were, you know, because you guys came in with a lot of momentum when you came into camp. Matter of fact, let's just go straight to spring ball. Spring ball. Yeah, go to a spring game first. Yeah. 2009 okay. was a huge spring game. Uh, yes. So that's when it came out. First off, spring game is going to be on ESPN. So I'm already like bugging because I'm like, this ain't even the real season yet. It's going to already on ESPN. Then it came out, it's going to be about 10,000 at the game. I'm like, dang, this just it's just the spring. But you kind of can tell because, like, all the returning starters and the guys who who, who weren't necessarily starters but played significant roles that everybody was coming back. So the team was pretty much loaded. We had, I think we had, like, 
45 to 50 guys that had at least had playing experience. They was either starters or just had playing experience, period. So, man, like I said, we was loaded. Then we leave, come back, come back off summer break, going into camp. But as soon as, like, like a week into camp, man, things are going good. You know, we guys are having mic'd up segments out there, camp, everything going good. And all of a sudden, everything just stopped. So, like, <laughs> one of our cameras out there, or no nothing. So, we like, what's going on? So, then all of a sudden, get a text. Uh, big man, coach, want to see see you in the in the auditorium <laughs> for a meeting. I'm like, uh, okay, you know, what I'm <laughs> I ain't think nothing of it. Okay, you know. So then we go in there, and then when I walk in and saw who was all in the meeting with us, I'm looking like, okay, this might not be good, or it could be <laughs> good. You know what I'm saying? It, it, could, it could be good because it's, it's, it's in my mind, in my eyes, it's the leaders of the team. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So. I mean, so I'm like, okay, so, so maybe just some captain stuff, because Butch always used to call call the leaders in the, in the room when we used to have just leadership meetings. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not thinking of it, but when yeah. I start seeing the normal guys wanted to meet with us, like like Merletti and TJ, I said, okay, well, okay, hold up now, what's going on? So there's how many guys were in the were in the room? Man, it was it was about I say it had to be about 25 of us, but when I didn't see when I didn't see Matt in the room. TJ, Zach Pinato, um, Ingersoll, I was like, okay, what type of meeting is this then? Then when Butch just came out and was like, we got some people coming to campus. And I'm like, some people? Who coming? Like, I think, I'm thinking NFL scout? Okay, who coming? You know what I'm saying? So NCAA's coming. I'm for what? So he was like, hey, they going to ask you some questions. Just tell the truth. I'm, but I'm still baffled. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, truth about about. What? Like, what's going on? You know, and then two days later, NCAA is in Chapel Hill investigating sanctions and, and, and improper benefits. And I was like, wow, you know, but then it, I didn't think it was nothing. I mean, up until I've been here four years, I ain't heard of anything. So I'm thinking they just checking. Then it, all these guys came back for their senior year when they could have left. They could be investigating, wondering why we did that, you know? So, okay, no, no biggie, but when it, when they started doing, giving us, um, when they started interviewing us, and then it got closer to game time, and they started looking bad, man. Like the starters, one of the starters on the defense, <laughs> who was on scout team. I was like, why the hell are we on scout team? Like, I ain't, I ain't first of all, I ain't never been on scout team. So why the hell am I on scout team now? You know, so. Oh, well, let me, let me um, let me ask you, Quan. When was the first? So. I want to go to Matt after this because I know Matt's got a really good story. But but Quan, when did you first hear about it? Like when did when did you first no. know that that something was up? What Cersei was saying though, like the same thing with Coach, they would just call that meeting though, and right. it just knew what it was at that point. Like you see, like you don't see everybody in there. Like Matt started, like you said, T J Zach. It's just it was just I don't I don't if was it I don't was the twenty five was Cersei. It, it ended up it ended up it ended up at fir at first it was at first it was it was. The starting, the starting defense. Yeah, yeah, no and Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Then, yeah. like a week later, I guess that was when Greg told him about the the, the, the tutor. So then when yeah. we got called back in there for another meeting. That's when it was twenty five of us because it was like, yeah. okay, it was it was NCAA. At first, it was just us, just the defense yeah. and Greg. It was the whole starting eleven and Greg. You know what I'm saying? It was just yeah, it, yeah. That's it. So then. <laughs> When, when the tutor came out, that's how Charles got thrown in. That's how uh, Ryan Houston, that's how Smitty, that's how Sean Drone, that's how all of them got thrown in because of the tutor. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. I got so, you. I, just, I, I remember that first meeting, though. I remember that right, first meeting, same though. Here. It was just, I remember that first meeting, though, because we just had to go meet with Coach Davis in the, in the uh, team room. Right. And it was just like, what's going on? Like, nah, these people in the town. Hey, so then... After this that, is like in certain, mid, like, so, this, this is in mid late camp. July. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, this is in training camp. Because mm -hmm. when, we went, when he went to go start the meeting, uh, De, uh, Deontay was like, "Hold up, we missing, we missing some more guys. We missing, you know, the guys I just mentioned." And the coach right. was like, "No, nah, this is now nah, this is it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like Cersei was saying though, like we was on scout team though. That's a crazy thing. We were on scout team. Scout team. Like, that, that's just, I mean, I know that's going to lead up to something, though. But we was on scout team going into the LSU game. We were on scout yeah. team. Like, so we didn't get no practice, none of that. We were on scout so, team. <laughs> so, and Matt, you can come in here, but everybody that's starting 
or presumed start and gets moved to the scout team. Matt, tell me what practice is like leading up to LSU because this game, uh, we've been doing. I've been doing this a long time with Inside Carolina. I've been watching Carolina football forever. We've talked about that before. This is leading up to the biggest Carolina football game in a quite at least since <clears throat> Mac was there the first time. You know the airplane story too, Matt. Share yeah, that part and so that and so we're there, uh, and now tell me what it's like when Quan and Cersei and all these guys are on scout team preparing for LSU. So we had heard, like hearing these guys tell the story about how the the meeting happened and everything. That it's ringing bells, like it's bringing memories back that I hadn't really ever that I really hadn't thought of in a, in a while, but. Um, or frankly, that I had just forgotten about completely. But the one thing that that I vaguely remember is just what I think what Quan said. It was just that it was the entire defense and then Greg Little, too. And I remember that, you know, spreading like wildfire on the team and people were questioning, like, what's going on? And nobody really knew other than, hey, like, NCAA is coming. And Nobody at that point, obviously, had any idea about any academic scandal or, or in the improper benefits that had that occurred, whatever you want to call it. Like, we really didn't know what all was at stake. Like, nobody had any, any idea. So leading up to that practice when these two guys go on scout team, I'll never forget, they used to put up a depth chart before every single practice and said, this is what we're going to go with today. And I'm thinking about in, in the DB room. So it's just, you know, me and Cersei in that room, Quan's in the, in the linebackers room at the time. And um, Coach Withers puts it up and it's like me starting, what, who else is it? Jabari, LeCount, and Gene. Trey probably. Gene my one Jackson, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, my one Jackson too, yeah. And so oh, oh. everyone like just kind of looks around the room like, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm looking like, what the? <laughs> So I remember thinking, like, I knew that there was some talk of NCAA coming to town and everything, but I frankly thought that because there had been nothing said by the coaches, nothing at all, you know, like there had been no, like, concrete evidence of anything, I thought that some of the guys got in trouble for, like, class or something like that, didn't go to class, and they're trying to, like, prove a point. Like, I remember Roy Williams, you know, pulls the starter sometimes and puts in some of the, the backups just to prove a point if they're not playing right, something like that. Nothing to the extent of what, what ended up happening that week. But um, that's kind of what, what I remember when all this kind of first started happening. And then, Joey, you mentioned about the, uh, the helicopters at practice. That's when things really started sinking in for me that, like, this was serious. Yeah. After hey, can I say something real quick? Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I just don't remember those helicopters at practice, though. I don't remember that. I guess I wasn't in tune. I guess I was on practice. I guess I was on the scout team, so I really didn't look at those helicopters, though. I just it don't remember those helicopters at practice. I did. It was I'm, at the end of practice. Was like, the practice. Dave was talking to us, like, all of us are on the knee, and he's standing there. And there's helicopters circling around uh, around Navy Field, and I remember okay. up and and yeah. Butch is trying to like talk to us and, and you know I guess prep us for the game. I have no idea what he said. I don't remember. I just remember the helicopters yeah. and just being like that's when it really set in that this was serious and like this yeah. was, was not just like oh guys guys are skipping class or something like that. The news I camera out there at the gate. Remember, we used to have to walk up the stadium. No, I, I, no, I remember when we used to leave the stadium. Though the news people used to be outside, outside the stadium. Though they want you, they want you to talk to them. I remember that though. Yeah, I remember that. So uh, let's 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 jump ahead a little bit. We know what all went down there and then. So let's let we're loading the bus, getting ready to go to LSU. <laughs> go to the airport to go to LSU. Okay. I, I will tell you this. I didn't even make it to the airport. Uh, <laughs> we're talking. So I will tell you that bus watch, 2010, one of the most epic things on Inside oh, yeah. Carolina. So people are sitting out there going, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see what I'm talking about. They're like, I don't know, is that is that Bruce? Looking at <laughs> is that Quan? I can't tell. Is that yeah. talk about that, Denars? Oh my God! <laughs> so uh, the morning. That morning, so we we had to wait. Yeah, so we was on pins and needles all week. Uh -huh. they, they still had to make a decision where they was gonna let us play or they was gonna withhold it. So I'm sitting there like, man, come on, man. We so y'all didn't even know until like even Friday morning, y'all didn't know. 
we didn't know. We, I didn't get word until Friday morning, right? Because wow. we had another meeting Friday morning. Had our bags and everything. You know what I'm saying? Sat in the meeting room, and they was like, based on what we know and what the NCAA knows, they we can't let y'all play. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there like, once once he said we we couldn't play, like I just stopped listening. Like my whole mm-hmm. my let whole me ask motor, you. my whole motor left me because I'm like, if you say something else to me, I'm liable to get kicked out of here because I'm liable to body slam everybody in here. Like <laughs> I don't play four years. The let game, let me ask you who who you know who saying? broke that news? Who who yeah, who, who tells you is that? The one, who's standing at the door going, uh, uh, "You're on the bus. You're not. You, who's who's doing that? Do you remember? It wasn't, even, it wasn't even standing at the bus. It was like it was before they left. Before they left, they, we already we already couldn't get on the bus. It was before they left. Before they left, so they everybody, t- everybody, they, everybody else in the cafeteria eating. We in the auditorium. Yeah, yeah. It was before they left. We couldn't get on the bus. So they tell everybody you everybody going right to get on the bus. We going left back up the steps. Yeah. Our car. <laughs> Who was telling you whether or not you were going to be on the bus or not? We didn't know. I don't, I don't know. We came in the room. It was. It was. Uh, forgot who said something. God. I say? forgot I who said I something. Holiday, Holiday and Butch was in there, but they didn't. They didn't say nothing. They they gathered us together. I, I forgot. I did, the guy's name. His face is in my mind. The picture of him is in my mind, but I, don't, I can't remember his name. Somebody on the staff. It's telling you, somebody you can on, go, you can't. Somebody you can on go. academic so from, from okay. over the, okay. like, okay. through, through the department of USC, that's the one who gave, broke the announcement to us. Because I think they was they was the academic side working with the NCAA. So they had to deliver the news to us from NCAA. So I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and this is – and this is – and we're laughing about it. It was serious business back then. No, like you it's said. funny now, though. It's yeah, funny I mean, now. it's 10 years later, and that's the whole point of us talking about this now is you can kind of look back and say, you know, what the heck, man. But back then, Denaris, you mentioned you were pissed. Hell, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the first game at, at the crib. The whole the whole spring yeah. summer I'm talking about, we got LSU in my hometown. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, in the dome, I got like 20 people coming, teachers, parents, cousins, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm ready, you know, then that happened. And I'm like, that's why I was like, nobody else say nothing else to me. So I'm liable to be going home for good. Yeah, <laughs> right. After I claim a couple bodies though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you got a stack <laughs> of home empty handed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Matt, you're on the bus. Quan, you don't I'm get on the, the bus that day. You're- I'm, I'm, at, I'm at my apartment. So this is Friday before the game's on Saturday. Yep. Yeah. You're at the apartment. Tell Quan, tell us how that works because we've heard the story yeah. about you guys arriving on game day. Just walk us through where how does that work for you and Bruce Carter? And and I would ask Bruce, but he's not here. So Quan, <laughs> no, no, we was at the apartment. <laughs> we was at the apartment because we still had to go through walkthroughs on that Friday. I guess that mm-hmm. walkthroughs that Friday before they left. And then after that, I guess somebody told us that we won't be able, we we couldn't travel, we couldn't go to the game. And uh then we went back to the room. And then somebody called us. Then we had to go meet with those people again. It might have been like four o'clock. We had to go meet those people again. The NCAA people had to go meet with them again. And then uh, it, we probably stayed in there about two hours, maybe. About two hours. Then we finally got a phone call after we met with those people. They was like, oh, y'all clear. Y'all need to uh, get a ride to the uh, airport. <laughs> we, got a, we got a private jet for you. We got a, we got a private jet for you. And then we had on a private jet because the thing is, though, they was just getting out of meetings when, when me and Bruce had got there. They, had, right. they were just getting out of meetings on Friday night when me and Bruce just got there. And so it was just crazy, man. My first time around on a private jet, I was scared on that thing. For real. <laughs> so, so literally, you went from – Friday morning, you go to the, you go to, uh, you go to the stadium for the walkthrough. You go in the meetings. They tell you you can't play. You go back home. You guys are probably pissed. You're figuring, all right. No, I, yeah. you know, just, I remember. I remember because our parents was there. They they was going to the game that Friday. Right. They came to right. Chapel Hill. They was there. Like, what's going on? Y'all ain't going. Y'all ain't get on the bus. No, we ain't get on the bus. <laughs> and then four o'clock comes around. You got to go back and talk to some more NCAA people and answer questions yep, you probably already answered. But Same go questions. back. Yeah, ask ask more. Then they figure out, okay, we don't really have anything here. Hurry up and get to the airport and get to Atlanta. <clears throat> and then, so so, what is that like? I mean, I know it's no, a it whirlwind just, for you, but you get it there. Was a and then, what it was were you just a Bruce? whirlwind. Yeah. The Y'all thing, upset? Yeah, I, were you I, happy? I, were you just frustrated? No, no, what? no, we was happy we got to play. No question about that. But it was just a whirlwind, just, every, just the way everything happened, though. Yeah. Like, it, cause everything really happened so quick, though. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, cause we went to, uh, cause when we went to meet those people, 
So when we left there, we got a phone call. Y'all need to y'all need to go to the uh y'all need to get to the airport. We don't got none of our stuff or none of that. <laughs> right. we, don't, we don't got none of that. Like we we don't we don't got nothing that we need for real. Yeah. Y'all need to get to that point. I think we might have went back to our apartment, and then I think uh I think we then I think we came back to the stage and somebody picked us up, and then we went to the airport. Like that, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was so I assume out. they they packed all your gear just in case. They, they, I, they I had to. They had to. Out. We didn't. We didn't they pack nothing. They, they so you just stuff. just in case. Yeah, we didn't have nothing. So so let's uh, and Denaris, you can sit this one out because we're gonna talk about the game itself. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Denoris, what'd you do for the game? Just out of curiosity. I know it's a sub, uh, Texas oh, yeah. subject, but what'd you do? Did you watch oh, it? Oh, I tell you. Here, two years ago, I tell you. I went I went to the ABC store, got me a bottle of Crown Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I went back to my room with my, with my, uh, with my lady, who's my wife now, and I... Hold me up a drink. She cooked. She cooked like this nacho dip. I mean, some nacho dip and dropped me that crowd apple and watched the game, man. That, that was about, that's all I could <laughs> do. Awesome. Hey. My Did mom you... asked me that I wanted to come down there. I was like, for what? If I come down there, I'm liable to stay. Like, I ain't no get... point in coming back to Chapel Hill if I come. Get through it how you can get through it, right? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, real. Sean said he went and sat in the stands and yeah, watched them. They showed, and they showed Marvin over and over in the stands. Oh, that I day. bet. And, and, <laughs> I bet. So, okay, so, Matt, the game starts. Here you are starting against LSU. We've talked about this. You, you and Joey talked about it. And if, you're, if folks are listening to this, go back and listen to the throwback of the LSU 2010 game. It's awesome. Matt's a guest on that podcast. TJ Yates is a guest on that podcast. It's, it's one of the best ones we've got, even though it didn't turn out like most of the throwbacks do. But, Matt, they – they tee you up. They say, all right, bud, you're starting. Here, go play against LSU. <laughs> yeah, and LSU is stacked at the time. They're not – they weren't ranked as high as they usually are sometimes, but LSU is stacked. Quan, you did not start, but, Matt, you're, no, starting against, you're starting against LSU. Where's the mindset, man, going into that game? There's got – look, people that say they're not nervous and not scared, I don't Ooh, believe it. I ain't going to lie to you. Oh, I was 100% nervous. And by the way, Quan not starting is – I don't care if you didn't practice all week. What, right. Any, what is what that? Is the point? Not starting is like ridiculous. That makes Did they give sense. you a reason for that, Quan? Did they tell you why they held you out for like a play right. and a half or whatever it was? Because you didn't practice Still ain't heard from – Still ain't nothing. 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 We're recording this on August 12th. Somebody <laughs> needs to tell Quan why he did not start the LSU game. Look, hey, the thing – let me tell you something about Matt, though. Matt, Matt, Matt was starting at nickel before all this even happened. Like when we was a sophomore and tour towards ACL, Matt, Matt was been starting. So this not like his first rodeo. He, he right. was starting though. He That's was starting why I said, at he also he also contributed. That's so, why I said my senior year so, we had so many. We had like over fifty guys that either started, played, or contributed on special team. We was I mean we had a. Yeah, no, Matt was playing. <laughs> Right. Listen to you boys, playing. Matt. See, I listened to you by yourself. You said I'm nervous. I've playing. never well, started. Was, These boys well, are standing he, up he for you. He might have been nervous because he was out there by himself, probably. That's it. Yeah. He was probably out there by himself. Yeah. And coming off an injury yeah. and rehabbing an injury. So Both y'all remember. Good. Y'all remember, yeah, like I was doing really well at nickel and I was going to play, but I tore my ACL. Yeah, tore yeah. I never really started on defense. Yeah, but you were. That was 2009. But that was your niche. And then when you got hurt, I had to go back to nickel. <laughs> <laughs> But so that was 2009 and 2010, first game in LSU. I'm still coming off my knee injury. I was yeah. going to that game third string. Like I was not back yet. Like my knee was not good right. to go. So yeah. like I had, and Quan, you, you may not remember this right, but I had one play of, of defensive experience, one play from 2008, Notre Dame game, last <laughs> play. Literally one play. <laughs> I, never, I never played at the end of a game, nothing. It was one play. So I know you're saying like, oh, he had experience, like sort of, but like this is by far the, the most playing time I would get. It was on the biggest stage. I was yeah. coming off a knee injury. There was just a lot that went into it. So yes, I was nervous going into it. Now I'll never forget lining up that first play and like looking at LSU across from me. Like, <laughs> Juan, you got into the game and, uh, and announced yourself pretty quickly. Oh, um, yes, sir. I had, they had to. A, they, had, they had a nice little – 
nice little slant route to Mr. Shepard, and you you said hello to him. Do you remember that play? Yes, sir. I remember right. I remember to this day. I remember to this day. And I think I played before that, though, that they ran like a little ISO in the mm-hmm. B-gap. The fullback came. I hit the fullback. You know what I mean? Tackle for a loss. I, I remember all that. Like, <laughs> vividly, though. Vividly. I can yeah. see it right now. Because I was mad, though. Because Bruce, he went in before I did. I said, like, a couple more plays than Bruce. Because Bruce went in before I did. I said, I said, like, a couple more plays. So I was mad. Like, man, why you holding me? Why you still got me out? <laughs> I can play. I, I was hot, though. I was mad. But then, I mean, it was, it, it was what it was, though. Yeah, it was what it was. So, so y'all, guys, y'all get in. Yeah, y'all get in. I believe, what was it, 10-7 until LSU? It was 10-7. Then about a, and I, I mentioned it last week, and I mentioned it on the, the throwback that we did. There was a six-minute span where LSU runs off three uh, big chunk plays that essentially just blew the game wide open to the halftime score that we would end up seeing of 30 to – to 13, I think. 10. That's what it was at halftime? 30 to 10. 30 yeah, oh, yeah. 10. It was 30 to 10 at halftime? Mm. Jeez. They ended up with 30 there, didn't they? Yeah. That's yeah, they the thing. That's what we – It was, it was 30 27, four. right? Yep. They didn't score in the second. But, but no some more. of those were special teams, though. Yeah. Those special Patrick teams. Peterson Patrick, got Patrick got Peace was going crazy. Patrick on. Peterson went nuts. He had about yeah, 275 return yards or something like yeah, that. He, yeah, he went crazy on special teams, though. And the thing is, though, we we got all our players, though, because – what coach, one thing about Coach Davis, though, his stars are going to play special teams, though. Absolutely. Yeah. We playing punt. We get kickoff, all that. So I think that's the biggest thing. I was on the front line yeah. of kickoff return. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that's what people <laughs> fail to realize is that all these starters are out, and that's bad. But that puts guys playing special teams that really ain't never played before and never been out there. And Patrick Peterson went nuts, took advantage yeah. of it. Yep, I remember and, uh, that. Yo, Pat went crazy. So, so we got after we got Quan game, and yeah. we got Quan and Matt who were contributing, you know, more than probably more than usual, uh, just because of the dearth on defense of guys missing the game. Denoris, what are you seeing while you're watching it, or did that crown apple not allow you to remember? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> it didn't it didn't hit me until He's in the crown cola. I got yeah. the crown. The crown, the crown hit me until about the fourth quarter. I, oh, I, so you I, missed all. You don't remember any of the good stuff. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still remember the game. No, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, when we started, we started making it back interesting. I put it down because I was like, yeah, my boys finally got to pull this out. I was, I was excited. You know what I'm saying? But I, like I said, I watched it the whole time. I knew like at certain moments. Their offense against our defense, I was like, man, I would have been there. Or are you watching as a player? Or are you total? I mean, is were you able to separate and watch at, it as a player? At this point, I'm still a, I'm, as a fan. I'm watching, I'm watching as a player okay. because up until the day before, my mindset was playing. Right. So I'm still wired, tuned in. I don't did all this game plan and all this for LSU. You know what I'm saying? The hype of being home. So I'm I'm still into it. I'm calling out some of LSU's formation because we don't seen it all summer on on film study. So I'm calling it out. Then we, we're like, we got to see Quan and Matt to make a play. I'm excited as hell. But then I'm like, damn, I can't be out there with them. Like, man, we need some more bodies. We need some more yeah. bodies. I see guys out there getting tired. Like, they wouldn't want to be this tired if we had more bodies to be out there to help. You know what I'm saying? So I just get frustrated. Like, cuss the NCAA out, and they're not even there to hear me. I'm just cussing them out out loud. <laughs> Only person to hear me is my lady. She tried to get me to calm down. I'm like, H and all. Like, that's BS. But I mean, but I was I was definitely pulling for for our, our for our team. That's that's the most important thing. Like the win is win. But I just wanted to be able to contribute because you we put so much work in during the spring and the summertime to yeah. not be able to perform. It's crazy. I think that's what people miss right there is how much work you yeah. guys put into this stuff. Right. I think people think. And people that listen to this and follow Inside Carolina stuff, they know what goes into it. But I don't think that everyday fan understands what goes into being a college athlete and college football player especially. And uh, and that's why, you know, with what's going on today with the seasons and all that stuff, why kids want to play. I mean, we've worked so hard. We just want to play. Uh, So LSU does what they do. They get up 30-10, come back, uh, some big plays. Like I said, we talked last week, and if you're listening to this and you haven't watched last week, hear Zach Pianato talk about those last two plays. Uh, that game's over with. Carolina loses. And I was there. I don't know. I can't remember if you were there, Joey. I, I can I tell there. you what. More LSU fans were pissed than Carolina fans, right? Yeah. I was – I as a fan, I was mad that Carolina should have still won that game even yeah. with – 
somebody being down. Yeah, and the p- pass interference, but you know, I'm not a ref guy. You know, good. I'm not either, but that was PI. But go yeah, ahead. that was 100% PI. <laughs> but so anyway, so then you go to uh, you play Georgia Tech the next week. Denaris, you're still out. You guys, you lose that game by the exact same score, which is ridiculous. I thought we played Rutgers the next week. Mm-mm. You I play Georgia, Georgia Tech. Tech drop oh, so Georgia I played Tech. three games then. Okay. So you go to Rutgers, I believe if my memory serves, that's a Thursday night with, no. with the Blue Pants. No, no, Saturday? we played them on Saturday. Okay, but is that the Blue Pants game? That 2008 no, no. game. 2008, no, we played Rutgers on Thursday no. night. Okay. We had all white on, we played Rutgers. That was the second game of the year because that's when I got hurt. It was a Saturday. It was at Rutgers, uh, at and, Rutgers. and it was a win, but it was the third game of the year. Hey, man, I'm oh, third home. game. So, we played Georgia Tech the second game? Yep. Yeah. Lost 30 and to 20. I, re- I, remember, I remember nothing about the Georgia Tech game. I remember <laughs> nothing about that game. I remember nothing about that game. So, y'all go to Georgia, you go to Rutgers. You make a statement with that game. Uh, the season balances out. And let's go to L- – let's do kind of like we did with the offense. We kind of jumped to the Florida State game. Y'all go down to Florida State. I remember this game vividly. Um, I was doing kind of like Denoris was doing during the LSU game, uh, enjoying stuff, enjoying some steaks and some alcohol. But you go to Florida State. Quan, what do you remember about Florida State at Florida State? Because Florida State was still a decent team then. They yeah. kind of fallen off. But and they had, just, they had stole one in Keenan the year before. Remember that? Yeah, that's, that's when we was up big at halftime. We was up yes. big that year. Yep. Navy uniforms I remember, on a Thursday night, uh, yes. Yeah. I remember a little bit of, okay, I just I just remember Florida State, they ran the uh like a speed option and the little receiver, he came in cold clock, he knocked me out. Oh like <laughs> he knocked me out. <laughs> I I remember that he, he cracked back me, he, he knocked me out. That's really the other thing I remember about the game. For real. Did somebody kick a did we kick a field goal to win? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I remember. At Florida State? Senior year, we kicked the field goal. Yeah, at Florida State. Yeah, oh, at Florida State. Yeah. 2010 yeah, Florida, Florida State's the, the, the field goal to win. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, 2010, they missed a field goal. They missed the field goal to win, and we yes. ended up winning. But I'm saying, right. they, they missed the field goal, but we kicked the field goal okay. to go up. Yes. Yes. They, they yes. Yeah, I think that's right. But, yeah, then Dustin Hopkins missed the field goal. He missed one. That's seconds. right. Absolutely. I got Joey, I need to let you talk more. Let me ask you one <laughs> question, though. Navy pants, Keenan Stadium on a Thursday night. Carolina, you guys are up, whatever the score was. They're back 28 to 3 at the half. They're backed up to their three yard line. Who fell down? Charlie Brown, wasn't it? Charles Brown. Charlie was it Charles Brown. See, well, I, think, I, I think he bit on a sluggo. But, well, but the thing is, though, that, that that's our fault, though. We all played defense. That's on our – we up 28. So we supposed to win that game all day. That's on us. We lost that game, period. Yeah. There we you lost go. that game. Ain't no – ain't no – ain't no if, then, the bus about it. We lost that game. Absolutely. We up 28-3 halftime. We made we made Christian Pondo first round draft pick for real. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Made. Did you send him an in invoice the, for that? You should have no, sent him in, an invoice. Said, hey, you in owe me some money. Half, <laughs> in the second half, he picked us apart. Right. Yeah. He picked us apart the second half. After, after that long ball, like we came, we came out, we three and out them. They three and out us on defense, and they pinned us deep. I mean, we pin, we we pinned them deep, and after that, they throw the ball. They, it was splash waterfall after that. It was, no, we made we made Christian Ponder first round draft pick. He owed us some money though, for real. <laughs> There was a there was he's, a he's paid, he played it pretty well too. He's he, done well. He did. He got all of it. He ain't lied that long. Yeah. Right. It don't matter. He won first round. He got some money. He owed us some of it for sure. You got to think though. Sir, two thousand nine though, our defense was good. We were top five in the country. Yeah. Hey, he owed us some money. Yeah. Yeah. I told that. you if if you see him at the store, on us. if you see him at the store, give him an invoice. I got a little of it back though when I saw him on the bench and I was starting in the NFL. I was like, yeah. ass belong. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Me and Matt didn't get none of that back. <laughs> hey, I got it back for all of us. That's for my boys. That's for my boys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> let, let's, I, uh, I didn't never forget. Anybody I played against in the NFL that, like, we beat or beat us in college, if I got a chance to beat them, I was like, yeah, that's for the boys back in the hill. <laughs> so uh, what's funny is, and we'll get to it later in the show, but Sean had a funny one about uh, – a certain player that y'all dealt with later in this 2010 season. Um, but 
you know, you dropped the first two. What did you reel off? Four? Four or five before you? You all about five straight. I know y'all beat Rutgers, and then I came back the next week. And won we four straight. Yeah, won four Carolina, straight and then lost at Miami. Yeah, East Carolina, Clemson, Virginia, and then, yeah, the next week we lost Miami. We went, we went on the street for a minute, though. We were killing people. Yeah, and then you got William and Mary, Florida State, and then you go to Virginia Tech. Or oh, no, you play Virginia Tech and Keenan State. Yeah, that was my first game back, Virginia Tech. Let's talk about uh, NC State. I said I wasn't going to do it in Denaris. I'm doing it. NC State, if my memory serves, and I hate, <laughs> I don't like talking about them, but you guys never beat NC State. No, nah, got a pick off of them. Uh, okay, <laughs> folks. Folks who are listening, you got to see the facial expressions of these three guys right now. There's, hey, I've the never seen is, so though, much. It. Uh, it's just so much disgust. Dean, use it. They had Houdini. They had <laughs> Houdini. Show my face, because if my face he's doing the same head, thing he was doing in college, he's doing right now. Exactly. So, so that's the thing. I don't think you know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't people don't realize that. what players actually feel when they talk right. about no, this. No, man. It, they had. They had one. They had him. <laughs> Houdini. And uh, John Cooper, Houdini. quote unquote, I told y'all off the air. Jonathan Cooper said that Russell Wilson sold yeah. his soul to the devil yeah. for those NC State games. He, he was Houdini. Like, he did anything. I remember one time we was up. It, it's third and 26 now. We, we, we came up with an all out blitz. I remember the call Mamba, Mamba, Mamba. That's when the backers and eight. I remember this. I remember it perfectly. He scrambled. It was 30-19, I'm sorry. He scrambled and get 26 yards for a first down. On Next scramble. player going to score on a scramble. Come on, and man. We, we, he Houdini. And I'm what crazy to me is he was never running that fast. He's just no, like hey, nobody could catch him. Hey, he picked his spot. Hey, you got to think, though. He, he, he top five put a lead for a reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, so give, you got to give him his credit. I, I watched the highlights before we jumped on tonight just to remind myself of everything and how it all went down. That that scramble you're talking about? Yeah. So I had a free shot on him. <laughs> it, like, it like made, I don't know, 10 yards down the field, something like that. One of their wide receivers pushed, pushed me on the back, like just hard enough to like just push me by, but not make me fall over. So like it wasn't yeah. a slip, but it was like, I would at least have a shot to touch him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, but hey, isn't that the greatest thing? Like, you, you remember though. 30-19, yeah. we got them back up. Boy, I'm thinking we all. If we get a stop, if we get a stop, we win the game. We get a stop, we win the game. Yeah. Sure, they go down and score again. <laughs> that's the uh, Denars. That's the let's line. talk about yeah. Talk about last play, Joey. I keep interrupting you. I apologize. Talk about last play because I'm, I'm gonna tell you what other people talked about, and we can laugh now. Ten years later, it's ridiculous though how lucky yeah, the man was. I don't know that Denars can laugh. Hey, he's he's, he's, uh, he's, he's smiling. <laughs> you got uh, to right. the next morning after the game, I was like, "Damn, that really happened." <laughs> so I'm, I'm we're at the game, right? And it's what fourth and three from the three or it's something. A hail mary from the three yard line. Yes. And, and he scrambles, 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 and he throws it. What looked like it was going into the third row. What happened? Man, all I know, we had a man coverage. Which I'm like, it's fourth down. So we're like, yeah, again, we got to bring pressure on him. Get it out of his hands. So we got a man covered. So the initial pressure didn't get there. So we all look back. He's still running. I said, oh, hell. So now we got to grab a man, like plastic, Plastic. grab a man. So I got my man. I'm trying to wrestle him out the back of the end zone. So like, because I know he he can't touch it. Trying to to wrestle him out. Looking back and seeing we get to him. Next thing I know, he he's like he, he was either like retreating backwards or he was kind of like running back, but he just up in the air. You know, they, they got four receivers, six two and up. So he threw it, he throwing it up. So guy on my back, I'm like, okay, he gonna try to get it. So I, I feel him going up, like jumping to try to put his hands up. I'm like, I can't get moss. So I go up, hit the ball out of his hand. He's on my back, he pulls me down as we falling. I know I roll up underneath them head bushes. I hear I hear I crowd saying what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I get up, I get up out the booth. I'm talking trash to him. I'm talking trash to Buddy because I know he didn't catch it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, so I'm like, I'm like, yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Like you didn't get it, you know what I'm saying? But like it's like three NC State guys arguing with the ref with their hands like that. So now I'm taking my mouthpiece out like, 
hey man, what the hell just happened? You know what I'm saying? Look at <laughs> Looking at the jumbotron, I see it. I was like, "Wow!" So when it was batted, nobody thought to get him out the way so he wouldn't catch it. Like, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even remember that play. Man, I remember it. <laughs> Man, you remember that? I remember it because so I, again, I watched the highlights just to refresh my memory of everything. And so, like, whenever the quarterback scrambles, regardless whether it's Russell Wilson or not. Um, our coaches used to always tell us to plaster your receiver. So, like, you, you turn your back to the quarterback and you basically, you know, you, you man your guy up and you're face-to-face -face with him and he's looking – if I can put a position myself on the camera. He's looking this way behind you to the quarterback. So, you have your back to the quarterback so that you're, you're trying to force the receiver out of the back of the end zone or just watch his hands wait for the pass. But if you turn your back and look at the quarterback, you have no idea what's going on behind you. So, you never want to do that. So we plaster, plaster our receivers, and one of the guys that DeNorris is talking about, he, you know, uh, Russell throws it up, and my guy runs to the corner of the end zone. I'm right there with him. He's a lot taller than me. <laughs> but he goes and, run, and jumps up, and the ball hits DeNorris, batting it down, and my guy, like, you know, it, it hits his hands. I had forced my guy out of bounds, though. Oh, he'd so, taken two steps yeah. on the blue. He would absolutely took two steps on the blue running his route. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like it's, it's obvious. You can YouTube it right now. Like it's obvious. He's he's in the end zone. His his feet are on the blue, and then he comes back in. Him and Denoris both touch it, and then whoever it is, T.J. Graham or somebody, catches the ball. And some so devil. <laughs> What'd you say? Some it's, red devil. Some, some devil. Some little wolf. So, and the way that like the bodies fell, like I literally like had a perfect view of him catching the ball and I knew that he caught it. And you see me on tape too and just go, no, it can wait, it can <laughs> But I knew I knew right away I was like, God, man, how the hell did that happen? Is that how you think I feel? I don't remember that <laughs> play. I must have been blitzing, Serge. We we must have been the Yeah, y'all were blitzing. Y'all were gone. We need to watch that. Play. We need to see no, what I, I need to watch that. Yeah, we're doing. Hey, hey what, what y'all supposed to have that play? Uh, what, what happened with Reddick though? Right afterwards, I really don't remember. That, that's, that, 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 that's the game that K. Red got. That's when K. Red got kicked, got kicked out. After, yeah, after, yeah. after the riff did touchdown. Yeah, number five. I, I do number, know that. Yeah. I think number, number five caught the pass. Matter of fact, number five and fifteen. It was five. Five is the guy who I jumped up with. Me and him both hit. Yes. Now that was the tall dude. Yes. So. When so when they when they called a touchdown, he turned and said something to Kev. And when he said something to yeah. Kev, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. So, I didn't think that was the fourth the quarter thing, though. That was, there's one oh. other thing, and Cersei, it might have been you, but I remember one of those guys who was trying to fight for the ball, the guy who did not catch it. He was on NC State though, and he I don't know if he twisted your ankle, Cersei, but he twisted somebody's ankle just like just because he didn't catch it right after the play. And I think no, it was, <laughs> no he didn't get me because I probably still been fighting. It, it was somebody. I thought it was you. It, it's on tape though. Like I didn't I yeah. didn't remember that. I just saw it, saw yeah. it back, and I thought he twisted your ankle, but just like Man. Typical stuff that used to happen in that game. Just, you know, there's always a little blitzing his man, man. None of the blisses work. We just kept blitzing his man. So, Qu Quan, I actually just went back and looked. You still had – you looked like you had gap contain. Um, Copel's had the original blitz from the left side. Got Wilson turned around. He made a little spin move, went back to the near side of the NC State sideline before he made his pass. And, I mean, they, essentially they kept you out of the play because once, once you actually had a, an angle in pursuit, he got rid of the ball. Um, but, yeah, Matt's exactly right. His guy took at least two steps in the blue, um, batted the ball back in. So it should have been illegal touching at that point. So that should have been a touchdown then. Yeah, it should have been a big deal that year. Um, okay. And, and but, that was fourth okay. down. Yes, but all that, other, <laughs> all that other stuff is just is just an absolute, you know, amalgamation of awfulness happening at one awfulness. time. Awfulness, it it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, ridiculous of, uh, it's ridiculous the way all that played out into one thing. Um, so let yeah. me add Guys, one this, thing, Joe. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. If you don't mind. So, just, sure. so we're, we were talking about how this is like oh, – now we know it's Russell Wilson. At the time, it was like he was just this little quarterback. This who, dude, yeah. He yeah. Him, you couldn't beat him. To, to illustrate how bad, or uh, I guess how, how little we knew about him, I remember in 2008, going back a couple years now, 
I remember when Coach Withers was in our defensive team meeting room, and it was our first meeting of the week. And I'll, I'll never forget this. Yeah. He said, now this little guy, Russell Wilson, he's pretty good, but <laughs> he runs around. That's, that's how he makes his plays. He runs around, he scrambles. He throws, and like that. Around and throws it up, man. Yeah. I'm sitting there like, okay. They said, they said, we're going to build a wall. We're going to do quarterback contained. We're going to force him to beat us with his arm because we don't think he can do it. Mm -hmm. 46. Yes, uh, he can. This is hey, also a guy hey. that uh, – this is also a guy that – would have been playing with y'all, but for some recruiting decisions. Yeah. Made by they, they, said they weren't going to let him play quarterback, so that's why he didn't Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt, the thing is, though, Matt, you know, search it we should have played him the same way we played Tyrod Taylor. We should have had the same game plan. Exactly. We should have had a game. We should have had the same game plan how we how we played Tyrod. I, I like Coach Woodley because I think he was a good coach, though, but we should have had yeah. the same game plan that we had against Tyrod. Because our junior year, Tyrod, he didn't do nothing. I mean, that's the game we wanted in Blacksburg. We yeah. should have had the same game plan right. playing against Russell Wilson the whole time. But you like Russell, you want if you're gonna sit there and rush four against Russell, man, he gonna finna he finna make a play. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna make a play. And the he thing is, he's done it. He's done it for no, every year he's since. Make a play. Every year. No. Denarius, you ever play against play. Yeah, Denarius, you play against him in the pros? Hell yeah. Twenty twelve. We played him up in Toronto. That's the year that's the year they went to the uh the NFC, but lost to uh, – I didn't know they lost to Atlanta in the division round because that's the year San Fran ended up going all the way but losing to Baltimore. But we played them up in Toronto, man. They beat the sleeves off of – he was doing that same thing. <laughs> he scrambled. All right. Right. He scrambled let's, um, let's, I'm going to try to make it a little uh, – try to move us towards a happier space. And then before we – after we talk about this next game, I want to do a little word association with you guys before we sign off for the night. But – Let's go to perhaps one of the most chaotic but fun games that I can ever remember in, in Carolina football history in that 2010 Music City Bowl. Just, all three, all three of you guys played in it. Uh, it Quan's, Quan's actually prepared visually tonight with the yeah, wardrobe no, no, no. choices he's made. Yeah, yeah, you see? <laughs> so his, his, his wardrobe choice actually echoes what I'm trying to get into. Uh, Matt, <laughs> uh, uh, Matt, I'll start with you. Uh, just tell me what do you guys remember about – everything that is and was that Music City Bowl culmination of the season? So I, I think of immediately two things. I think of bottles. <laughs> <laughs> some, <laughs> maybe some crown apple being thrown from the upper deck? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so. That's <laughs> so they, had, they had glass bottles and they yes. were throwing them at us whenever, you know, the, they, whenever all the fans didn't agree with the refs and everything. Which, which side, side note, this is, this is totally unrelated, but it's some weird fact that I know. So the Browns, I think when Butch, ironically, was the coach in Cleveland, did, if you guys ever remember seeing this, there was a bottle gate incident. Browns versus Jaguars in Cleveland. And there was some controversial call and the Browns lose the game. The refs call the game over and Everybody, all the Browns fans start throwing glass bottles. And people are getting pelted. Refs are getting hit. Players are getting hit. It was a mess. So that was back when you had glass bottles. That was the game that forced NFL stadiums to have plastic bottles. Yeah. Okay? So you have that little right. nugget of information. Then you go 2010, Music City Bowl. For whatever reason, they didn't have plastic bottles. They had glass Bud Light bottles. Because so, Nashville, yes. <laughs> so we start getting bottles thrown at us. Everyone's telling them, get your helmets on, get your helmets on the sideline because people are getting hit. I remember, I remember Dante Page Moss, one came close to hitting him. And he no, he hit him. No, it did hit him. Yeah. Back in the stands. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he picked like, it up. Dude, like, stop. It hit, it hit him. It hit him off the shoulder pad. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So that that's Matt's recollection. Uh, yeah. Denaris, let's go to you next. What was your recollection of that of that insanity? Oh man, like you said, it was a combination of I see of how crazy I see started. First off, what I remember what I remember is is Deontay getting hurt, and I remember the ending because I thought the game was over. Like when 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 they when they initially we didn't get out there for the field goal, I thought the game was over. I was like, damn. It's my last game in the Carolina uniform. And then I was just like, 
Oh, well, I turned around and found my mom. I said, y'all go ahead and get out of here because these fans are getting crazy. You know what I'm saying? So my mom and dad had left. Like, I had already waved oh. them off. Like, go ahead and go yeah. to the car because these fans are getting crazy. Like Matt said, they started throwing bottles. So, so like, as I put my helmet on the way to my dad, like, y'all go ahead and get up out of here. So then next thing I know, uh, matter of fact, I don't know if you remember Matt, but, like, me and Matt, me and Matt dabbed the hug because, like I said, we thought the game was over with. And, like, I, my, me, me being a senior – uh, Matt was like, good, good plan with you, sirs. And I was like, same here, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, we getting ready to leave. And next thing I know, I hear a whistle. No, nah, the game ain't over. Controversial call. We had to get back out there. So now I'm like, oh, snap, we still playing. And then first they ended up winning. Yeah, I knew it was going to be crazy because like, that whole sea of orange in that stadium and we had that yeah. one little corner of Tar Heel Blue. I was, hey, yeah. hey, I was in that corner. We were loud. And we were also that corner. That's why I we were, about we were warm. Was like, get out of here. Like they going crazy. Like you see these bottles? Deal. Like All right. <laughs> last Quan, I saved you for last on this because you balled out in this game. Um uh, you know, I went back and, and looked at your stat line again before we started recording tonight. But what do you best remember? About year. The, what do you hey, remember about this game? Best game money. We'll start we'll, we'll to get to the game. Nashville, the city of Nashville, we had a good time out there. See the Nashville, the it's bowl. It's a fun week. bowl game, yeah. yeah. No, it was a fun bowl game. It was a fun bowl game. <laughs> you know, I just remember all the craziness we had. Because we, we always practiced. I forgot what they called it. Hurry up, field goal or something. We, we practiced it all the time. But then we, we couldn't get it right for some reason, though. Right. Then all that stuff happened. Then when the overtime, then I just remember I got the, I got the pick. And I, I, I might have could have ran it back, though. But I knew I, knew I wasn't full speed. So I knew somebody was going to catch me. So I'm like. Why? Why am I? Why am I trying to run this back and they and they <laughs> tackle me? And the thing is, I know we we got we got we got Casey Barth, man. Hey, we we need we need five yards, not even five yards. Let's right, go and keep good on the win. I had a lot of confidence in him. If he'd have missed it, we got to go play again. But I had a lot of confidence in him at that time, though. Let okay. him go out there and keep the field goal, and we're gonna go win the game. And that's what we did, though. And the thing is, though, I, I remember to this day the little fullback. He ran a little flat route to to the. He ran a little flat route. I'm right there, the quarterback. I don't know who was throwing it to to this day. And I just jumped up and picked it off in ball game. Ball game. All I know, Quan, when you picked that, I took my helmet off and ran out the field so quick. Ball game. Like you said, you I had I had too much faith in Casey because I dropped my helmet. No, me too. I, 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 <laughs> me we're too. going back. Game over. I started <laughs> me too. Me too. No, I had, that's why that's why I didn't try to advance the ball. I you know when I caught it, when I took you a caught knee. it, I was yelling, that's, get down. Yeah, that's what everybody when I was. Called it, I, took, I took a knee. I'm like, we, what, you get the ball at 25 it, yard line? When you caught it, I said, hell yeah, Quan, get your ass down. And then I okay. ran to the sideline. I started taking <laughs> off. I said, this. <laughs> All we need is put it in the middle of the field, case for to put this mug over this net, and we finna go home. Yeah. Like, that's it. All right. <laughs> I'm going to ask this, and this might be throwing, this might be like throwing red meat to, you know, to a, to a pack of hyenas, but. Y'all actually got to play against him and take some shots on him. Tyler Bray. Uh, <laughs> yes. Ty, Ty, Tyler Bray. I know. Um, oh, hey, I know. Hey, I remember when I got a set. I'm, I'm going I'm to cut y'all yeah, real quick. No, go ahead. Because I, I, see, I see Cersei doing it real quick, though. That's why I did Wait, it. Cool. No, yeah. He used to do that. In the room. I got a sack. I'm doing. I'm doing what he's doing. Looking at him. Come on, boy. You ain't like that. <laughs> Sean says. Sir, you remember that, sir? Yeah. You remember that? Because yeah. I was. Sean laughing. says. Sean said he taught. Sean said he ragged on him in the league about it. Oh yeah. When they were in Kansas City, yeah, he did mention <laughs> that. Because I, because I, uh, we played Kansas City up in Buffalo, and Sean was on the team. And then I was like, Sean, they go your boy, they go Bray, ain't it? Yeah, his ass. <laughs> So I mean, I asked the do I asked the offense, and I'm serious, and let's keep it clean a little bit. But as a defense, do you see all that mess? Do you see all this throat slashing and all? Do y'all pay attention to that? Well, I didn't see it when when I don't, we really don't see it when the QB do it because like DBs half time we down damn field, so we normally right. see the receiver get up, you know, drop the ball, first down signal, and all that. But uh, but when he did it, yeah, I wanted a piece of him bad. No, I saw it because I'm. It's trying to. It's something to give me an edge, though. Right. Because you look at film, though. You see when, when they make a good play, they score. They they do all that. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at it. That's why I did it. That's why I did it because they was doing it. Hey, I made a play. I'm gonna do what y'all doing. I'm gonna put it in your face, right. and that's what it was. Right. Yep. I did. I mean, that look. What I don't understand is how a kid like that gives you guys more reason. Yeah. 
to want to hunt him down. I mean, he, he was a young boy, though. He was a young boy. Yeah. He might have been a sophomore at the time. No, he was young. Then yeah. I knew I could get to him every play. I played DB. But if I, if I was on the end, yeah, yeah this game. He got to learn. You get learn. No, he got to learn. <laughs> got to learn. Got to learn. All right. So, well, we're, I want to be respectful of you guys' time tonight as because this is the type of thing that if we could pull up some bar stools, we could probably do this for hours on end. But – um, let's play a little bit of word association, and then I've got one more question uh, from Tommy and I before we, we let you guys go. <clears throat> word association, and I'm not going to call on you guys, is shout out what you think, and if you feel like elaborating, feel free. Um, I threw Tyler Bray out there. NC State. Trash. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> I'm trash. sorry, Joe. As clean as I I'm keep. Sorry. Trash. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm we'll sorry, we'll, we'll edit that. we'll edit that okay. in we'll edit that in post game, but I appreciate please, your please. honesty. I'm I, I will uh, clean up the I'm audio sorry. version. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, Tommy. No, That's but all right. look, but look, no, seriously, I don't think. Like I said, you guys played against them. That's the honesty. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question though. While we're on here, guys that aren't from NC, from North Carolina, does it mean as much as it does to Uquan? Okay. Does, it, does, in, does the NC State rivalry mean as much as out-of-state guys? Because, look, I'll, I'll be honest. What they always said about Butch is that he treated NC State as just another game. That ain't what the offense said, but that's what everybody always said, is that Butch said NC State's just another game. I know for people from North Carolina, it ain't like that. Well, I mean, I'm not – me not being from here, my biggest rivalry was every time we played Georgia Tech because I, mm -hmm. I knew half the roster. So, I would always get gamed up for Georgia Tech for sure. But NC, NC State was just another uniform for me. Now, I didn't understand – I didn't understand, I didn't understand like, freshman year when I got to Carolina, like, we lost to NC State. A lot of the guys was crying. And I'm like, guys, it wasn't seniors, though. And I'm like, what the hell wrong with them? Like, you know what I'm saying? I can 28, 27. Them. I'm like, I'm like, I can yep. see if he's a senior, you ain't – but that's when I underst finally understood, like, the right. tradition of the robbery. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, okay. That's why they pissed off. Because me personally, I just want to beat Georgia Tech because I, play, I played against some of those guys in high school. So, it's just pretty much just bragging rights for me. I mean, but it's just neighborhood stuff. And then I started realizing, like, it's a whole – State against each other. It ain't just me against two guys I know from the neighborhood. It's it, right. man. Hey, that <laughs> divorces, siblings to fight, houses divided. I'm like, man, this crap is really serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, man. I mean, but in the, the day, NC State still trash. <laughs> another yeah, uh all right so an, another word association uh, matt recruit. hold on you, you you didn't get you didn't get what matt had to say matt. <laughs> I was gonna say, in, 2007, in 2007 we played in raleigh against nc state and being an out-of-state guy from ohio like I, I really didn't get it up until that moment when we played yeah. Raleigh, and right. i could literally feel the hate the i could hatred. see like they have you know their stands are close to like our yeah and all that and you could, they were just always talking, always had their mouths. Yeah. I'm talking about the fans. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking, like, that's where, like, my hate for NC State, like, was born right there. Yeah. Right. yeah. I can yeah. tell you, yeah. I will, I'll tell you a story, and I'll interject my personal stuff. I went to see State play Florida State back when Charlie Wood was at Florida State. And I sat in the, for whatever reason, the NC State family section was right behind the Florida State bench, like, right there. And I have never in my life seen the stuff. I mean, I don't know how you guys do it. I'm sorry. I'd be climbing in the stands, probably get my butt kicked, but I'm somebody's getting fight. Right. They hammered those Florida State guys. Now, that was back when Florida State was good, so they shut them up on the field. But I could not believe the stuff coming out of that daggone fan base yelling at Florida State. And that's Florida State. That ain't Carolina. Yeah. So I can't imagine what you guys endure. I was so surprised in here. I used to be like, damn. Today. So, it just trips me out how people get so angry. It's like, <laughs> like you're man, so man. angry. But anyway, it's a, it's a way of life, yeah, man. Dude, like. <laughs> it's a way of life, Joey. It's That's a way exactly of life, right. Babe. So, uh, another, another word association. Again, just throw them out. Um, recruiting. As far as when we got recruited or now? Both. At all. Yeah, however you feel. 
Oh, shit, it's great, man. Like, it, it, it was great when we got recruited. The class, the class and the, 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 the range of talent we brought in, and then Mac Brown doing it again, bringing in four and five star recruits all over the country. So, man, it's great. It's on the up and up. Yeah, tell me about Mac Brown, Quan. What do you think about Mac Brown these days? Man, Mac, you, you can't say enough good things about him at this point. Right. He, 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 he's really Mac Brown. Like, everybody always talk about Mac Brown, Mac, 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 Mac. He really doing what Mac do, though. You got to look at it. We got what, got top 10 class in the country this year? I ain't see him. I ain't. Hey, he, he's Mac Brown for a reason. So I don't got nothing but good words to say about Mac. Mac, Mac gonna get us back where we want to get to. He he gonna get us back to them dogs that we had in 2010, 2008 when when our when our uh, freshman 2007 when we got recruited. Right. Me, Search and Maletti. Mac gonna get them type of people back in there. That's uh actually Tommy. That was Mac Brown was gonna be one of my my word <laughs> associations. So well done. Um, I got another one for you, Tar Heel. Matt. Life. Mm. Nope. Matt. It's come something on. that it's something that I, I didn't really understand until I think I got here. And when I mean you see even you even see the, the network and how people care about one another when they don't even know you, you're just a tar heel and you have something in common immediately. And just them being being willing to open doors, introduce you to folks. And I'm talking about like even like business stuff. But um, it, it's it's powerful. It, it really is, and it's something that um, I've now lived in North Carolina longer than any other place I've lived, so it feels like home to me. Hmm. Well, that's that's a great one to to hit us to our last question. I want each one of you guys to you know to be as honest and as vulnerable with this as you want to be. Uh, how do you want to be remembered uh, for for anybody who's listening to this or watching this today, Denoris? I'll go to you first. Um, I just want to remember that somebody who cared, somebody that was passionate. I love, I love football. I love the guys that I come in contact with and the guys that I was able to, to meet and grow while I was at Carolina. Uh, Carolina is always number one place in my heart. It's the, it, was, it was the first most beautiful place I've seen outside of Atlanta when I started traveling around to get recruited. Uh, for a fact, the first person I met in Carolina was Quan. Hey, at the camp, me and Scurzy. Yeah, <laughs> me and Scurzy. Hey, we, we stayed at Carmichael. We were 17. We were 17. We were riding the seniors. The first person I ever <laughs> yeah. met from the state of North Carolina, other than a recruit, was Quan Sturdy. Nice. Me and Cersei. And he was, there, he, together. he was there as a quarterback, and I was there as a that running back. And I was a running back. Remember that? I was a running back. <laughs> yeah. Me and Cersei. Man, me and Cersei. Right. What about, what about you, Quan? How do you want to be remembered? Man, I just wanted to just know I was a good teammate, and I was a good teammate, and I just wanted people to know, hey, I was always there for them for real. The main thing is, though, the guys I played with, though, they knew I was a good teammate. That's the main thing. And, like, what Search was going back to going in Chapel Hill, though, it's the, it's the best place on earth. And this ain't saying nothing. These recruits might not hear. I'm just saying for us, Matt know that. Search know that. It, it's the best place that you got to go to school at. Right. And you go to Chapel Hill, you're going to fall in love with it. Point blank, I don't care who you is. I'm still so, Chapel Hill. To come back. Hey, I'm ready to go <laughs> you need back. to move closer, man. You need <laughs> to move closer, sir. I need, I need a reason. I need a reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one, Matt. How do you want to be remembered? I mean, both both of them just just hit the nail on the head with what they said. But um, I guess the last thing, um, I guess it, which is a little bit bigger than than UNC, is just um, being fortunate enough to to have that whole flag story and my brother run, uh, you know, serving in the military and, and flying that flag overseas in Afghanistan and uh, in Iraq and bringing that flag back to UNC and that flag continuing on in, uh, in our tradition at, at UNC football in the program. I think that's just, just a great story. And um, you know, I, I guess just to be associated with that is, is, uh, is pretty cool in my mind. So definitely. Um, I guess that that's what, if I had to be remembered for one thing, it'd probably be the flag. Definitely. It's Pretty still, powerful stuff, Matt. They still, it, it still do that, right? Yeah, it's the same flag. I remember that's crazy, man. Yo, when, when, yo, when you told us that story, your brother used to fly that on his seat every mission, like in reference to us. I was like, man, this man over here taking bullets in a plane for us. Like, 
I always like was mesmerized about that. So like, I remember I got to run out with the flag a couple of times, and I took like extreme pride in that. Like, like, because I felt like I was representing a guy who was putting his life on the line. Like, I'm scared to fly in general, but he's in a jet, like fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've watched movies like Pearl Harbor, Red Tails, and all that. So I can only imagine like. Come on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? And you're doing this for us. And for you to come back and be like, man, I, when I flew with, when I flew with every battle and I had this flag, I thought about my family, my brother. I thought about you guys. I was like, man, he don't even know me. He threw a flag on him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hey it, it is so definitely cool. bigger. Man, yeah, absolutely. It's big. It's bigger than all of us. Let me wrap this show. And then I don't go anywhere because I want to ask you a couple questions. Uh, but let me wrap the Inside Carolina podcast sponsored by Johnny T-Shirt, johnnytshirt.com. You've been listening to the 40 Club. With, that's, that's, that's what we call it now, you know, 40-year decision. Joy Powell, Matt Merletti, Denar Searcy. Denar Searcy, in case you missed it, was on the 40 Club a while back. Go check out that. It's, hey, he's almost got his own booth in here, right? Yeah, really. He's yeah. Uh, he's almost a co-host here. I told you, I'm doing nothing but take care of these kids and play golf. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, on, sir, sir. you suck in golf, buddy. I, I, so, so what? So what? Hey, I ain't the only one out there that suck. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to go PGA. Hey, yeah. Let I'll me uh, let, I'll beat you let, real bad. Let, uh oh, I hear something brewing. Let me wrap this up. Listen, folks, you've been listening to this Inside Carolina podcast. If you want more, we'll do more at some point. But I'm gonna break it off now. Joy Powell, I'm Tommy Ashley. Thanks to Matt Merletti, Denar Cersei, Quan Sturvant. Appreciate you guys listening. We'll be back again soon. And that was the uh, 2010 defensive reunion. We, we had the offensive on offensive union on a couple of weeks ago, Joey. They were pretty lively. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure that uh, they even came close to what we just experienced with the defensive guys. You know, and, and two, less, two less players, and it was, uh, it was a party in here tonight, man. I mean, you know, it's it, – that's this is probably as lively as the 40 clubs gotten but uh again we appreciate their honesty because when those guys are willing to show up and be honest and forthcoming with us it makes for a better show because i mean after all that's that's what we're here for it's not about you and i it's about the guests and the guys that we bring in and when they can come like that then it's uh it's entertainment yeah it is and we kind of got lost i got lost in talking to him a little bit listening to the stories but you know we've talked to matt we've talked to denoris i know that you've had uh Quan at, at a tailgate maybe once or twice in the past i've never talked to him at least in a long long time and it's definitely not in a anything other than a reporter uh player type setting but Quan was a treat i thought he is uh he's got a heck of a personality on him you could you could also see why guys would have wanted to play with him right like when you bring that kind of emotion just to a conversation you know, it's easy to it's easy to get along with guys like that, and it's also probably easy for him to motivate people. So, yeah, it's he he's got a heck of a personality on him, and I can see where he would be a he would be a real treat to have uh, in a locker room. Yep. So, we've done a lot of these forty clubs. We did a lot of them um, together here on these last two episodes of two thousand ten. Joey, what do you think's next for the forty club? I think that as this show hits the airwaves, there's a cool new graphic. I don't think there you've is. You've seen we, them. Yeah, we've we're, got we're, a, eas we're easing into some some new phases here. I would throw out to anybody that's listening to listening to or watching the show, if you have some suggestions for people that you want us to hear us to talk to, shoot them to us. Shoot us an email. Shoot us a comment on the message boards. Um, you know, let us know. And if there are any former players that you, you know, that are listening to this that feel like they have a story to tell or would like to be a part of this, then get in touch with us. We'll, we'll certainly um, – We'll certainly try to respect your story and give you a platform to tell it. But uh, it's been really, it's been really fun for us, and I think our subscribers are getting a ton out of it too. It, indeed, it has. It's it's fun to go back and it's fun to talk to guys that actually lived it. It's when sure. you're in when you're in it and you're you know inside Carolina covers these teams, and when they're in the middle of it, it's one thing. But when you go back and talk to guys uh, that are out of it, that have been through it, especially you know, you got guys like Denar Cersei. Uh, Hakeem Nix that played in the league for a long time just the perspective that they offer yeah. you can't get it anywhere else and no matter what we do I never played college football I certainly never played NFL football there's nothing you can nothing I can say or do that can match what these guys and what their perspective brings no and I think that there's also some value too for the fact that these guys have 
have grown up and had lives since they've been at Carolina. And I think that gives them some additional perspective and some things that, you know, maybe if you would have talked to them 15 years ago, you would not have had this sort of outlook on things. You would not have had this sort of retrospective on things. And I think that that just adds some depth to what we're trying to, what we're trying to do here. Yep. The 40 club for a reason. It's not a four year decision. It's a 40 year decision. It's not just a Mac Brown thing. These guys that played for John Bunning, played for Butch, played for Mac 1.0, they all believe the same thing. Carolina is a 40 year decision. That's the 40 club. You've been listening to the Inside Carolina podcast, The 40 Club, sponsored by Johnny T-Shirt. I'm Tommy Ashley. That's Joey Powell. Rate us and review us on iTunes. I'm serious. Take a second. Go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and rate us and review us. It moves us up the list. Some weird algorithm makes us more visible, gives us more uh, sort of incentive to do these podcasts, not for us, but for you, the listeners. And if you've had a chance or hadn't had a chance to watch these on YouTube, certainly go check out the Inside Carolina YouTube page. <laughs> it's quite a treat when we have a room full of, of guys letting it flow like the 2010 defense did. I'm Tommy Ashley. Joey, appreciate it. All right, man. See you guys. We'll be around. Thanks. <laughs>